Every year, Nickel 3-3 Cub is one of the best defenses in Madden because it universally does a really good job of defending both the run and the pass, and it really does provide some of the best combinations of coverages, run defense, and pass defense. Now, unfortunately, Nickel 3-3 Cub is a little bit worse this year uh, after the latest patch that they just dro- or that they dropped uh, earlier in the year. And the reason why is primarily due to the fact that what I always talk about, and this is a little bit more into my dollar stuff, and we will get to dollar because dollar is really a a great defense. The one difference between 3-3, one of the biggest differences between nickel 3-3 cub and dollar is nickel 3-3 cub only utilizes one, uh, only utilizes one uh, nickel corner or slot corner. So because it only uses one slot corner, then the defense needs to flip to the formational strength. It's not really a great defense, in my opinion, to be ran on baseline. And it's not really a it's a defense that you're going to have to learn how to flip with people. Uh, That is super, super important and uh, very valuable information. If you run nickel through three cub, you have to be able to flip with people. However, nickel through three cub provides a really good alignment for run-based offenses. It's a balanced defense. Uh, this actually for, this formation used to be uh, is kind of a variation. It, it's not so much anymore, but it, it's kind of a variation of the nickel 335 bear formation because uh, it, it is a bear front and bear fronts generally are going to do a little bit better job against the run. It's almost like a 51 defense with a nickel corner. And then it does have some unique uh, pressure options, right? We At this point in the year, we've been able to kind of lab up and find some really good pressure out of this formation, which is important because pressure, there is never, and then we get a nice pick, there is literally never, ever, ever, ever a situation where it is okay to justify running a defense where there is no blitz threat if there is any other formation in the entire game that has a blitz threat. All right. It's super important to have a blitz threat in your, in your arsenal, which is why uh three, three cub was largely abandoned in comp Madden after the uh, most recent patch. Now I am rocking uh, trips tied in kind of doing some unique things out of this formation today and looking to uh, really just kind of test out some of my new stuff that I've been rocking. If you want to get my full nickel three three cub ebook or trips tight in ebook, they're completely up to date over on my school.com page or school page. Uh, if you guys want to sign up for the school community, that link's going to be down in the description. Not only do you get access to all of the offensive and defensive ebooks for both Madden and for NCAA, but you're also going to get twenty four seven support. Where in that community page, you'll be able to ask your questions. And uh, kind of be able to troubleshoot, not just with me, but our entire community over there. So if you're looking to get better at Madden or NCAA, link to sign up for that is in the description. So kind of doing some new stuff out of nickel or out of trips and really trying to utilize this play PA slot corner. I think that this post route is one of the better routes uh, in the game, just in terms of where it gets to on the field. You can do a lot of stuff with that post and PA slot corner in general is just it's it's one of the most versatile plays in Madden. It's been one of the most versatile plays in Madden for a long time. So there's a lot of ways that you can run this. Like, for example, you could run, I mean, you could run something like what I'm about to run here, which is essentially a shallow cross variation of this. Um, see how the user goes to the right or to the left, and we're able to throw back to the right and get in for six. So I like trips tied in. I'm having a lot of fun in trips tied in right now. This is Packers trips, but our ebooks we have uh, basically cover Patriots trips, Bills trips, and Packers trips, which I find Bills trips to be the best. If you want to just run trips tight end, I find Bills trips or running gun. Uh, Running gun, the main difference is it just has a wide receiver screen and it has the play flood, whereas the Bills trips has the play wide receiver short post. I think Bills trips is better because wide receiver short post is probably right up there with PA slot corner as the best trips tight end play. So that's something to keep in mind. Back on the defense side of the ball. So couple advantages to nickel third the cup. Number one, the alignment's actually pretty good. Um, you can defend the majority of formations in very, very good uh, alignment with this formation. Now, the other thing uh, that we're going to show you right here, and of course, he's going to run the ball, 
is the Blitz from 3-3 Cub has always been pretty solid. Uh, this is the first year, and this, this defense was actually unbelievably good in the beginning of the year. And it kind of kind of slowly became, or basically it was just after the patch, but this blitz kind of kind of left the the good graces and really has come back. Um, and I'm, I'm kind of surprised. It's interest, It's always been interesting to me, as I give up a nice little dot, it's always been interesting to me and Madden how, and I'm going to set this up by talking about my man David T. If you guys don't know David T, one of the best labbers uh, in the game, one of the best, one of the most underrated comp Madden players in my opinion and he's he's uh he he kind of is he's really good at cfm and won a lot of money uh in cfms and obviously run was in madden bowl and madden 23 and actually was really good this year as well what david t was talking about in august most comp players did not find out until uh right before madden bowl and that that uh thing that he was talking about was blue passing he was talking about how blue passing was so important and that if you could master the release of your passing, if you could get a perfect release, it would basically negate under pressures. It would negate um, rollouts. Like you could throw the ball with basically perfect accuracy, even if you're rolling out, even if you're under pressure. Uh, and essentially, it just became this idea that as long as you mastered the timing of the play, you would have perfect accuracy. A lot of pro players called BS didn't think it was in it doesn't didn't think it was the thing, and then sure enough in Madden Bowl you hear a ton throughout the tournament this idea of blue passing being super super important. It's kind of what I'm trying to get at with Nickel Through the Cub and Labbing in general. Nickel Through the Cub was patched, I believe it was October. Um, it was right before the most feared tournament that John Beast won, and in that patch for Nickel Through Three Cub, it also patched the loop blitz, it patched dollar, uh, it patched a lot of different blitzing concepts. But what's interesting is here we are uh, several months, uh, several months removed from, from that. And guess what's back in the really good graces of competitive Madden? Nickel 3-3 Cub. Is that because Nickel 3-3 Cub objectively wasn't good enough to be a comp defense? Or... Is it because Nickel 3-3 Cub was not, uh, people did not know how to run Nickel 3-3 Cub? And I would contribute to the discussion here that I believe it's really the latter. Um, the game really hasn't, like from a patch perspective, changed a whole lot. But people found new ways to run the same old stuff. That's why I think Nickel 3-3 Cub is a timeless defense in Madden. And if you think about it, when did Nickel Through Through Cub really become like top tier? Everybody's running Nickel Through Through Cub. It's one of the better options that you have defensively. Really, the answer to that question, it was ran a little bit uh, in previous Madden's prior to Madden 20, but Madden 20 was really where this formation took off. In the Madden Bowl of Madden 20, a lot of players were using this defense because it was really good run defense. It really set you up to stop the run well in a, in a game where a lot of people like to run. As, um, you know, as a Madden player, if you can negate the run game, it really does limit what a lot of people can do. And it depends, of course, on the year, right? We're right now in a little bit more... We're, we're probably in the most run-heavy meta that Madden has been in since Madden 20, right now in Madden 24, due to angry runs, due to the preload X factors, the vanguards, all of that stuff. We'll talk a little bit more about this in the next one. So in a game where it's really, you know, kind of heavy run based, just in terms of how people are playing, you're going to see it right here with Vanguard, and we just get absolutely railed the first play because I wasn't really ready. Um, with Vanguard, with the run meta, 3-3 three, three Cub becomes a really good option because 3-3 three, three Cub is going to do a really good job of not just be, – because you see how simple that was? Like, I just got absolutely destroyed on the first run play. All I had to do 
was just simply move, uh, just simply change the defense I was calling and get that and and get the the flip because I forgot to turn auto flip on in my coaching adjustments. But now you see he's ha- he's starting to struggle with his little run his little run scheme that that he wants to run, obviously. Uh, and and so the, the, that's the idea uh, with this. And here I didn't get my shift off, and of course he gets out of there, and he's gonna get a really lucky little you know gain. But in general, this is why I really like three two cub because it's gonna do a it's gonna do a it's not gonna be the best run defense in the game. Okay, um, just a fantastic drive. I just want to say the person that I'm playing is literally why I don't like Madden right now because this is ridiculous. Like it's not it's not real. Uh, it's just we're just gonna put a bunch of little glowing players on the field. And they're just going to knock everybody off their freaking rocker. I think it's ridiculous that this was ever put in the game. And it has caused the most run-heavy meta that we've seen since Madden 20. And everybody complained about the run in Madden 20. So just one, just a little sidebar. And we'll actually be able to shut him down. I, I'm really pretty confident that the 3-3 Cub will do a really good job. And we'll be able to show that, you know, this is a really good formation. I don't have, like... I don't have the time and I don't have the desire to like look up mutt cards that can counter Vanguard. Like I think Vanguard is so ridiculous as an ability and is just truly terrible for the game. So there's my little rant on that. Real quick, trips. Uh, we're in trips out of Packers. Uh, main reason I'm in Packers is just to honestly just kind of mess around with it a little bit. Um, and I get a bad, I get a bad, or I just free from a little too much there. But if you want to get my full trip side in ebook, I got it out of Bills and Packers. Uh, I got two versions of it on the on the uh, school.com page, the school.com community. Really super uh, excited about that platform. I think it's been really good so far. If you guys want to get access to literally everything that I'm doing over there, you get all the ebooks for both Madden and for NCAA, which I think is a great deal. Only ten dollars, and you're gonna get we're gonna get you right on both games. So if you want to sign up, the links in the, in the description below. So it looks like he's going to run a lot of man coverage, so I'm going to have to do some uh, some stuff a little differently. Uh, but by and large, we're going to be okay here. I'm trying to think how I want to set up this route combo. I don't have a ton of time left. But basically, the running back Texas route, if they're playing you in a lot of man coverage, the running back Texas route pretty much has to be usered, and he just stops the middle field, which is fantastic. Uh, we'll just throw this away and move on. <laughs> So he's going to run man coverage. Man coverage is really inconsistent. I'm actually going to be dropping a little mini guide to how to play the best man coverage in Madden right now because because of all the X factors, um, you can actually play some pretty good man coverage. So be on the lookout for that one. And here I'm going to show you how to manipulate man coverage, as you can see right there. Get a little man swap. And now we're (laughs) easy and we have wide open players again. Another really good man beater that I like to utilize is basically this combo right here with a comeback on that backside receiver. Mesh post really is is kind of practically what we're going to be doing. Didn't get the great man. Didn't get the best man beating from my drag routes, though, so we're going to have to throw it away again. So he's just going to basically drop eight and play shade down man coverage. There's some things you can do to manipulate it, but honestly the biggest thing that I would tell people is be it, when when someone's playing like this, just be patient. They're gonna beat themselves, and they're gonna mess up. So just keep that in mind. Let me see here again. He kind of messes up. We'll be able to write out him. Big Trent Williams. I might start Trent Williams up running back instead of Bo Jackson. I don't know. I'm going to base here. That's actually the worst way to run base, but we'll see if it works. And Trent Williams, I need you to not get tackled by Ray Lewis like that. I actually have Munch Strong in the audibles, I believe. But again, one of the best ways to manipulate man would be a route combo like what you see on your screen. And we'll see if we can get this open. I'm kind of expecting him to use the angle route, and he's literally just kind of avoiding it. Look at how many people he's blitzing. I'm gonna look. He's actually going to get the sack, too. It's kind of crazy. Um... Gonna go to one of my favorite ways to beat man here. This is also a really good combo. And we'll just high point it over the top of his head. And we're in for six. <laughs> He's literally just completely ignoring the fact that we have a running back. It's kind of interesting in his man coverage, but 
So uh, back to talking about defense. So, again, I don't like the way this guy plays offense or defense. He actually plays the game like a lunatic, but no problem. We'll be able to beat him. Uh, <laughs> but 3-3 Cub does a really good job against the run and the pass. And it does a really good it, – It's a, it's so the biggest thing with 3-3 Cub and the biggest weakness, in my opinion, now post-patch, they changed the audibling system. So you can't really audible from 3-3 to 3-3 Cub – for the purposes that you would to get really good adjustments, really good cross man, all of that stuff. You kind of just have to come out in the, in the formation. So that's, that's a little bit of a bummer, but the, the really cool thing about this, about this formation uh, is it's kind of a blend of, it's kind of a middle ground, if you will, of six, one and dollar It's kind of practically like what this formation ends up doing for you. It's kind of a blend of those two. So it's not as good against the run as like a 6-1 would be, right? Just just, just kind of from basic, like obviously it's not going to be as good because it's it's a nickel formation, not a 4-3, even 6-1, super heavy run defense. However, it is much better against the run than almost any nickel or dollar set. So the biggest weakness of this formation post-patch really was, and, and still is, the fact that you can't really – I'm trying to think how to word it. Like, you can't really get the best adjustments possible, right? Um, and the reason why is because what, what you used to be able to do out of this formation that made it super good is you could cross man with those linebackers when you came out in nickel 3-3. So, like, you could come out in nickel 3-3, audible down in nickel 3-3 cub, and you could, you could cross man everybody on the field. Unfortunately – you can't really do that anymore uh, because now the game is coded, and I really hope this changes, but it's not actually a nickel 3-3 cub formation. It's really almost like a two or like a four down lineman set. But as you can see, the blitz screams. The blitz is still really effective. And the other element that you have from, from this formation is the man or the just the not just the main alignment, but like just the alignment in general is really good for bunch. It's really good for really any three wide receiver sets. So like tight Y off, doubles, Y trips, trips tied in, bunch tied in. All of those formations, this, this is going to align really, really well against. The only formation that this doesn't align great against is basically spread or five wide. And there are still some things you can do to get it to, to, get it to be a little better against those packages. So... That's that's a lot of or the biggest reason why, you know, you need to kind of be, I think, really looking at 3-3 three, three Cub again and taking another look at it because the defense itself has been structured to be really good in Madden for a long time, has been good in Madden for a long time, and the only reason it wasn't really that good was because of the, you know, the patch where they kind of changed how the defense worked, but it, but the defense is still really effective. Let me see if I can throw this over the top of him. I'm actually going to throw a pick. Oh, that's so frustrating. It's like terrible defense, and I just bad a bad. Um, I just did not bullet pass it. So good, good defense by him. I hope he runs the ball some more, so I can show you kind of what what we can do from a run defense perspective. So you see here, I can just shift to this the formation strength. And then basically every run is going to really struggle. Uh, and the reason why is just because numbers. You have that nickel corner that's going to – so you're going to force them to run to the weak side of the formation, um, which is which I think I find is really helpful. Now, you could also balance it out. Like if you want to balance it out like this, you could do that, and that's now going to give you more of a 6-1 type of look. So you notice how we can basically craft a 6-1 uh, a six one defensive concept. And – it really, it just doesn't, it, again, you see, we're not like, we're not like blowing the run up in the backfield every time. And I'm not really trying to, but, but the, the biggest thing here is we're making, we're making our opponent work, right? And we're going to get another stop. That's our second stop. And uh, on a run based player, run the ball with a little glowing running back and we're still doing fine. All right. So it'd be great if I didn't uh, continue to do that. Yeah, I totally missed my play up, which is awesome. So we'll do a little zig. I wish the zig was a little better against shaded down man than it is. Use a little tight end corner. 
My running back stopped running again. Why is my running back stop running? He must do that in, in uh, shaded down man coverage. This two men under defense is so dumb. All right, let's go with the post. We're going to go with the slant. This is normally a really good way to beat man. Just kind of see what his user does. And he's going to give up the touchdown. Just make the throw. And there you go. So, again, I think, you know, you see here, I mean, he's running two men under every single play. We're able to dot it up. Thanks for watching the video. If you want to get my full offensive and defensive ebook, both for Madden and NCAA, link is going to be down in the description. Join our school platform for just 10 bucks.